Hey guys. All right, so we are going to be working on everyday math lesson 6.7, multiplication with larger numbers. I love this one. I think because you guys know that I love doing the break apart strategy. So this is breaking apart those two digit numbers to make them into smaller numbers that we can multiply by. So your goal is I can play multiplication topic and apply strategies to multiply larger numbers. Um, I want you to solve these in your head. Three times eight. You should have said 24. Four times six. Think about how we can add a group or subtract a group. I would maybe subtract a group, so I would change the six to five, so I could do um, four times five is 20, and then add another group of four would be 24. Four times eight change the four to five and then subtract eight to get 32. All right, so compare the multiplication facts, which pair and each, or which fact in each pair has a greater product. So is six times four greater or five times eight? You should have said five times eight, five times eight, 8 is 40, and 6 times 4 is 24, which is greater, 3 times 7 or 3 times 4? You should have said 3 times 7. If they have the same factor here, if I'm multiplying by a larger number, it's obviously going to be bigger than the smaller number. So 3 times 7 is 21, and 3 times 4 is 12. Which is bigger, 2 times 8 or 5 times 5? You should have said 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and 2 times 8 is 16. So we're looking at our factors there. Okay, turn in your math book to page 203. And on page 203, we're using the break apart strategy to solve um, 5 times 12. So Sadie used the um, split in half strategy where she was doubling and um, she took 12, it's an even number, and divided it in half so that she had two um, 5 by 6 boxes and then she added them together. So she knew that um, this side became six, um, two sixes. And so she had five times six equals 30. And then because this one was 30, then we know this is 30. So that's where she said 30 plus 30 equals 60. So we know five times 12 is 60. So if I'm gonna explain it, here's what I would say. I would say Sadie used the doubling strategy to solve 12 times five. She split 12 in half to get six and six. Then she used the rectangle to show two five by six rectangles. Five times six is 30. So then she doubled 30 because there are two of those rectangles. 30 plus 30 equals 60. All right, now, like I said, I want to get into the break apart strategy. Um, it says use a different strategy to solve five times 12. Use drawings, words, or numbers to show your thinking. Um, I'm going to show my work off to the side just because I have a little bit more room. You're going to be doing this in your book as well. So I want to solve 5 times 12 by breaking it apart. So if this is 12, I'm going to have 5 over here. I want to break apart the 12. For me, what makes sense is I know the 1 and 12 means 10 and the two and means two ones because two plus 10 is 12. So I want to break my rectangle into 10 and two. So I'm just going to split it. This will be 10 and then this will be two. I'm going to find the area of this rectangle and solve for this rectangle. I'm going to do five times 10 and that equals 50. Then I'm going to solve for the area of the second one. 
Remember, this is a five over here, so I'm gonna do two times five, and that equals 10. Then what I'm gonna do is add my two numbers together, my two products. So 50 plus 10 equals 60. Five times 12 equals 60. All right, let's look at another one and see. So this is on page 204. I'm gonna do the odd problems over on the left side, and you are gonna complete the even ones on your own. So my first one is six times 15. I still want you writing this along with me. So what I'm gonna do is to draw my rectangle, and I have a six and I have 15. Just like before, I want to break the 15 apart, and that 1 means 10, and the 5 means 5 ones. So I'm going to split my rectangle into 10 and 5. So this will become 10, and then this will be 5. I have to find the area, so I'm going to do a 6 by 10 rectangle, and that equals 60. Okay. On the right side, I have to find the area of this rectangle. This is a five by six rectangle, and that equals 30. So when I add those together, 60 plus 30, that equals 90. Six times five equals 90. You should have this written in your book over here. So I'm going to write my answer in, that is 90. Okay, I'm going to solve number 3, which is 11 times 4. Again, I'm going to draw my rectangle. I have 11 and 4. I'm going to break apart the larger number, so I'm going to make this is, remember, 10. And then the 1 is 1. When we add it together, 10 plus 1 equals 11. So I'm going to break my rectangles into 10 and 1. And remember, the right side will be the other number, 4. So I have to find the area of a 4 by 10. 4 times 10 is 40. And then I have to find the area of 1 times 4 and that equals 4. I'm going to add 40 plus 4, and that equals 44. So my answer for number 3 is 44. Number 5 is 16 times 7. All right, so this one's going to be a little bit trickier, but I have faith we can get through this. I am definitely going to want to split this into 10 and 6. 10 plus 6 is 16. So I'm going to split this. Here's 10, and then here's 16. I'm going to find my 7 times 10, and I know that that's 70. Now, we haven't really talked about this much, but I want to look at this. I don't know how to count by sixes, and I don't know how to count by seven. So solving seven times six is going to be difficult. But what I can do is I can split this even more. I can split the six in half because it's an even number. So I don't need to split um, the first rectangle because I already know the area of this one. But I want to split the other one into something smaller. So I'm going to do, instead of 6, I'm going to say 3 and 3. I still know this is 7. So I'm going to have 2, 7 times 3. And I can count by 3s. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. So 7 times 3 is 21. This one is also going to be 21. So now what I have to do is I have to add them all together, all of my numbers. I'm going to add 70, 21, and 21. 
70 plus 21 plus 21 is 2, 9, 11. My answer is 112. 112. So I'm going to put that over on my answer sheet. Remember, this should be on your stage right here. This one will be right here. And you should have this one right here for number two. Those need to be on your board or on your books. You are going to continue breaking apart these numbers and do two, four, and six on your own. I want to look at this, try this. It says Keisha is buying fabric to make costumes for the school play. She needs at least 50 square feet square yards. She has a four yard by 12 yard piece of fabric. Does she have enough? So on this problem, I'm going to look at my numbers. She has 50 square yards. She has a four by 12 yard of, of fabric. My question is asking me, does she have enough? She needs 50. Does she have enough? So I want to think about my um, what I see in my head when I'm reading this. So I know what she has. She has this four by 12 yard um, piece of fabric. And so I want to know how much fabric she has. She needs 50 square yards. So I'm going to multiply this four by 12 to see what she has. I am going to split the 12 into 10 and 2 because the 1 is a 10 and the 2 is a 1 or two ones. So this becomes 10. This becomes 2. 4 times 10, that is 40. 4 times 2 is 8. When we put those together, 40 plus 8 equals 48. Now, I know how much she has, but that's not what the question asked me. It says, does she have enough? She needs at least 50. So does she have enough? No, she does not. She is short two square yards. Okay, so your assignments are going to be to remember... Um, complete your math boxes and complete your home link and then you're going to play multiplication top it um try to get the highest score work on your multiplication facts use the strategies if you need to